everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. I created this channel for my students and really all students to use as a resource, hoping to make nursing school a little bit easier and a little bit more palatable. In today's video, we are going to be mixing insulin. So we're gonna gather our supplies. I hope you can see this. I tried to like zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. So we have our insulin in pH, which is our intermediate insulin, and then our regular insulin. We cannot mix long-acting insulins. That is your Levomir, your Lantus. Those are things that we wanna avoid mixing. Some insulins already come pre-mixed. If you've seen them, if like a Novolog 70-30, or a Humalog 7525. Those are already pre-mixed insulins, so you should not mix those with anything else either. They're already good to go. So make sure you have the right type of insulin. You also wanna make sure you have the proper syringe. So for insulin, we're gonna be using insulin syringes. I'm gonna see if you can zoom in here. You can read it. Not very good, huh? Oop. So it is in units, and this one, Holds, can see mine. focus, there it goes, um, 100 units. So insulin syringes come in units. If this said MLs on it, then it would not be safe to give. And then of course we need our patient, which is our little squishy thing, and some alcohol wipes. So the process of mixing insulins is actually very simple. What you wanna do first is inject your air. We inject the air first so as to not create like a vacuum effect when we're drawing up the insulin. So we're gonna inject air into our NPH first, then we'll inject air into our regular, then we'll pull back our regular and pull back our NPH. All right, so now we're ready to actually mix our insulin. So the first thing we wanna do is using our alcohol wipe, wipe off the top, Okay, now if these were new vials, which they're not because I've used them a million times for demonstration, uh, you would have to take off the flipped part and you would roll them. We never shake insulin, we only roll it or you can invert it like this to kind of mix it up. Okay, turn it so you can see it. Okay, so everything's been cleaned, we're good to go, we're wearing gloves for pretend and now we're ready to draw up our insulin per our order. So for example, our order could be, we have to give 10 of our NPH and 20 of our regular insulin. So let's draw that up. So next we wanna inject our air. So let me just oop, be safe. So air into our cloudy first, our NPH. And then we'll do air into our regular. And now while we're already in here, we're gonna pull back. Now after we've injected our air into our regular, we're gonna pull back. So we'll invert the vial and we're gonna pull back to our desired amount. We'll get rid of that one. Now we're gonna do our NPH. So we have our syringe that still has uh, the amount of our regular in there, and we're gonna put it in our NPH vial, invert that, and then pull back the desired amount. So for us, it's gonna be a total of 30 units. I don't know if you can see that pretty well. It's gonna be 30 units. And you notice I didn't push any of the regular insulin into the NPH. That's what we wanna avoid. And so now it's mixed and it's ready to be given to the patient. When you mix an insulin, it needs to be given to the patient immediately. You have about five to 10 minutes, sometimes they say 15, but really good rule of thumb, five to 10 minutes before you give this. I would hope that you're mixing this at the bedside in front of the patient or at the cow right in front of their room and you're ready to give it to them right away. So let's give it. Now we're ready to give it. So we're gonna take our alcohol wipe, we're gonna cleanse the skin. So where can we give insulin? We can give insulin in the back of the arm, not the deltoid, but the back of the arm. 
We can give it in the abdomen as long as we're two finger breaths, which is about two inches away from the belly button. And then we can give it in the thigh. So when we go to give our insulin, we want to pinch it up, pinch up that skin nice and good. And then like a dart-like motion, we're going to inject it. One, two, three. Little pinch, inject it, release. Now that was done. No big deal. Now what we're going to do with our needle is we're going to discard it in the sharps container. So that is the process for giving insulin. Another thing I wanted to talk about here briefly is the needle itself. Can you see this one here, how it's all bent? It's very important that you never inject anything into a patient with a bent needle like this. Also, don't try to straighten it out, then inject it. That's not good either. So if this happens, which it does, the needles are very fragile. If this happens, discard it and get a new one. Get a new syringe, start all over and put it in the sharps. A few patient teaching tips I wanted to talk to you about in regards to insulin administration. You always wanna rotate your site of injection. You don't wanna give it in the same site twice. What can happen is uh, it can cause scarring, bruising, hardened areas under the skin can develop. And then if you go to give it again in that site, then it's not gonna absorb properly. It's not gonna be able to do its job correctly. So rotating sites is really important. Also, we already talked about it, but disposing of sharps in a sharps container. Another important thing about insulin is you never, ever, ever want to reuse your needle. You saw before when I showed you how it was all bent and stuff. So that's because these needles are very thin and they're very fragile. They're made that way for a reason. It's a good thing they're made that way. It's for the comfort of the patient so it doesn't hurt as much when they have to inject themselves or when they get injected. But because of that, they're very easily damaged. And worst case scenario is they're at home administering insulin to themselves after you've given them education in the hospital and they reuse that needle and a little piece of the needle or the entire needle gets broken off and stuck inside their skin. So obviously that's not something we want to happen to our patients. So very, very important that you teach them to dispose of them properly, to never reuse a needle, and to never use a bent needle. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.